Welcome back. Here we are in Unit Circles Part 1, Lesson 7, Inscribed Angles. And inscribed angles are actually some of my favorite things to teach. So I'm excited about today. So here is our note-taking guide, and we've got some vocabulary to start with. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, at the top, I've got a little Where's Waldo. And the reason the Where's Waldo is on there is because we have... Um, we're always looking to see where the angle is and whether where where the vertex of the angle is and if it's inscribed a central angle or if it's outside so the where's Waldo we always ask ourselves where's the vertex for the angle okay so where is a vertex on an inscribed angle an inscribed angle is always identified with a circle so let me draw this an inscribed angle has a vertex that is on the circle. So I'm going to draw a point on the circle and then draw an angle inside the circle. That is an inscribed angle where the vertex falls on the circle. So it is an angle where the vertex falls on the circle. Okay? So that's simply the definition of an inscribed angle. So we're referring to this angle right there, the mouth of the angle. Okay, an intercepted arc. Let's first draw a picture so you can see what that intercepted arc looks. So if you've got an inscribed angle, the intercepted arc is the arc that's associated with the angle. And let me highlight that in red for you. So it's the arc that's basically right here. That's, that red's not real good, but it, it at least highlights it for you. It is the arc that's associated with the inscribed angle. So let's call that the arc, or the part of the circle, that falls inside the mouth of the, ins the, the angle. Okay, now it, um, central angles have intercepted arcs, inscribed angles have intercepted arcs. So is there any arc that is intersected by the sides of the angle? Okay, now let's look at an inscribed polygon. That means the polygon is inside. So it is any polygon whose vertices or corners, right? Vertices or corners lie on a circle. Okay, so if you have a circle, and let's say we're going to draw a quadrilateral. I need four points, and I'm going to draw those four points, four vertices on the circle. Whoops, that didn't come out very well. But you've got that polygon inside the circle, okay? So you can draw, I'll draw a second one over here. Let's just draw a triangle. It's a little easier to see the triangle. And all the vertices, though, have to actually fall on the circle. Okay, circumscribed circle. That's actually this circle. We say a circle is circumscribed about a polygon. So it is the circle on the quote, we'll call it outside of an inscribed polygon. So if you're looking at the same picture, we're just referencing the circle on the outside and the polygon is inscribed on the inside. So circumscribed means it's outside the, the polygon. And that's the de those terms for you. Okay, now let's move on to the theorems. The first theorem is about an inscribed angle and what its measure is going to be. The measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay, so that's the theorem and that's the rule for an inscribed polygon. And then the one that goes with it, that just means if we have two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So I'm going to show you how these two theorems play in using this picture down here. Okay, 
So you can see down here at the vertex X, we have an angle that looks like it's 50 degrees. Okay, I think I'm going to zoom in just a little for you. There we go, make it a little bigger. So this is 50 degrees. Now we need to look at its intercepted arc. So what we're going to do is we're going to go extend both sides of this angle from Z to X and X to Y. And here is the intercepted arc that falls in the mouth, right? We were just talking about that. So this angle is 50 and it's inscribed because the vertex falls on the circle. We're going to go out to this arc and we're going to take it and double it. So that means the arc is 100 because the rule says an inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc. So if we have the angle, we double it to get the arc. If we have the arc, we half it to get the angle. Okay, so this arc measures 100 degrees. Now let's look at the one that's associated with this 35 degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the two sides. Okay, so what arc falls within this, the mouth of this angle? Well, W to X. So since this angle is 35, that means the arc associated with it has to double to 70. Okay, so once you kind of see that, let's go see if we can answer a few of these questions. Okay, angle X or Y, X, Z. So Y, X, Z. So there we go, YXC, that's a 50 degree angle. It intercepts this arc, which we just noted. So the measure of YXC is half the measure of the arc, or the arc is twice or the arc is twice the measure of the angle. So find the measure of arc YZ. Well we just did that and that is a hundred. Okay, if let's see, YXZ and YWZ both intersect the same arc. So let's look at that, okay? I know this isn't perfect, but I'm going to highlight it in a different color. I'm going to highlight the second angle. Okay, so we've talked about this first one, right? This angle intercepts that arc, but also YWZ intercepts the same arc. So what do we know about the angle up here? It's going to be the same as the angle down here. So if this arc is 100, this angle is 50. The same arc is 100, so the other angle also measures 50. So you can see that both of these angles intercept the same arc. Now one of the clues is this. They both have the endpoints of Y and Z. So notice you got Y and Z and Y and Z, they just have a different vertex in the center. So if you get confused, you can highlight them or also look at the arc and notice the arc is YZ, the endpoints of the angle are YZ, so that should help you too. Okay, now we're gonna find the measure of angle Y, W, Z. Well, we just labeled that and that is 50 degrees. Okay, now let's move on to the second set down here. Find the measure of WX. Okay, we just figured that one out, right? Because we said this angle is 35, so this arc must be 70. Okay, and then find the angle measure of WZX. So let's go there, W to Z to X. Let's highlight this angle. What's the intercepted arc? This is the intercepted arc, 70. So that means the angle back here must be half or 35. Okay, now notice this is 35 and it intersects WZ. This one's 35 and it intersects WZ. So the only difference between the two angles is the vertex, right? It's just a different vertex. This has a vertex that's Y, this has a vertex that's Z, but both of them intercept the same arc. So I hope that is helpful in seeing it. It's hard to see all four of those, but a lot of the diagrams are like that. Okay, so let's flip over to the second page. Now these are just extending and looking at special cases of the inscribed angle. Okay, Theorem 611 says if a right angle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse is a diameter of the circle. Conversely, so it's kind of